Let's do interference. Interference, uh, I'm just made a nice map here so we could uh, take a look at it. The formula is I is equal to one minus C, and C is the coefficient of coincidence, and that equals one minus the number of observed double crossovers divided by the num uh, number of expected double crossovers. We read this directly from the data. The observed is equal to three, and the expected double crossovers is the product rule. We'll take the percentage of crossovers in region one times the percentage in number two, and uh, the percentage we express is 0 0.1904 times 0 0.0501. times the total number of progeny, which is 3713. And when you reduce this down, we start to see that uh, this number uh, at the bottom is 35.42. That's our denominator. So 3 divided by 35.42. Um, this is just the number of expected right here. And it equals 0 0.084. So just as a ratio, we're saying we're getting less than 1% of the cro double crossovers that we expected. Well, the actual interference is uh, 1 minus 0 0.084. Uh, and that is equal to 0 0.915. Ninety-one and a half percent of expected double crossovers did not occur. So that means a crossover in this region right here interfered with a crossover in this region over here, or vice versa. If there's a crossover over here, it reduced the number there. So this is a region where we wouldn't see a lot of double crossovers. They can happen, but they're pretty rare. This second question looks like the first. Um, here I've given you avocados with F1s and you could come up with uh, gene uh, symbols if you needed to. I'm just gonna give you the quick rundown here. Um, I've gone into a little more detail about the back cross and which is really a test cross because uh, if you look at the data and the fact that we've got the F1 with tall yellow, uh, yellow flowered and smooth avocados, those would be the dominant traits, obviously, and the dwarf gray flowered would be all be recessive, so this back cross is a test cross. But all these numbers are pretty much the same. We've got these groups, and if you're looking for a parental, you might have been confused. What, where'd the parental go? Well, it turns out that the parental is those two traits that typically go together. And if we look here, we've got tall going with smooth, tall going with smooth, dwarf going with lumpy. So there we see our parental crosses. That means that the tall and smooth go together. So let's name the, the, the symbols. Uh, big D is tall. Little d is dwarf. And lumpy is the recessive trait. So we're going to go with L as lumpy. And capital L is smooth. And the flower color is independently assorting. So we know that in the F1, we'd have big D, little d, big L, little l, just like this, and the percentage of crossovers would be in here. So are the genes assorting independently? Uh, well, yes, flower color is. So on a separate chromosome, you'll have your um, yellow, and your gray, just like this. Um, are all genes linked? Uh, not all genes, only D and L. How are they inherited? They're inherited as recessive characteristics uh, for dwarf, uh, gray flowered, and lumpy fruit. Uh, it appears to be um, autosomally inherited because we don't see any distinction between the genders as they come out. And if you uh, took the time to calculate the distance, you will find out, you may do this yourself if you want to, that uh, dwarf and lumpy are 4.55 centimorgans apart, but I'll leave that as an exercise for you. So now we get to a question here with an inversion. I've got two chromosomes. Here's one that's normal, and here's one that's got an inversion in it. The inversion is clearly at this region all the way to here. And then again, we have another region that matches up. 
This is a para, P-A-R-A-C-E-N-T-R-I-C, -E paracentric inversion, and that it, it does not include the centromere. So that would be a quick point right there. Uh, the other one would be pericentric if the centromere was inside the inverted region. Uh, let's go to a new page here and I can draw the pairing configuration for this. Remember how to go about doing this kind of a question? You draw a vertical, or a, pardon me, a horizontal line that consists of all of the uh, normal areas. I'll put a dotted line here just, just to remind me where to, to, to draw the line. Uh, uh, I'll do the normal one first. So I'll do a lowercase a and a lowercase b. We're going to have a nice big inversion loop just like this. And then I need to have g, h, and i over here. Uh, c, d, e, f. I'll equally space c, d, e, and f just like this. And I'll put the centromere here between a and b. And here's my sister chromatid. like this and then I draw my inversion so let's put the loop in first and I'm gonna leave lots of room on the inside of this and I'll do my other chromosome trying not to cross with a pen there we go and my centromere and I'll use capital letters because that's what's on the example there a B and then we have F next and F would line up with that F I'm gonna draw it on the inside F uh, E, capital D, capital C, and then capital G, capital H, capital I. So this is the pairing configuration that would be on here. We need to indicate a crossover between C and D, like this. And I got to make sure this end here is on the left of D and this is on the right of C. And then when I draw the gametes, there are two really easy ones to draw, so I'm working on C right now. Uh, draw one of the uh, each of the parentals. Let's go with that one, and let's go with this bottom one that isn't involved in the uh, crossover. So this would be A B C D E F G H I. There's one mark. Uh, another easy one to do is this one right here, and this will be the inverted one, and it's going to be capital letters A, capital A, capital B, and then F E. D, C, G, H, I. And now for the tricky ones. And um, I'll switch to another color pen. Let's go with blue for this one. I'm going to get into this crossover here. So I'm going to use the bottom strand. So I'll go little a, little b, little c. Centromere between a and b. Then I switch over in the crossover and capital D E F capital D E F B centromere A capital B centromere A now um, this would be one single chromosome but I'm only asking you to draw the gametes so I'm just gonna say here's one gamete and I'm just gonna arbitrarily cut it between D and E so there's one piece of DNA and in my other gamete There'd be one over here like this. Now, there's a piece of DNA we haven't included. Uh, it's always a good idea to include that um, to indicate you know what's going on. So let's put in, uh, I'll use green for this one. I'm going to follow here. It's a big IHG, IHG into the loop, capital C, then little d. And then follow all the way through, little e, f, g, h, i. Now, this one would not necessarily be in a gamete because it's an acentric fragment. There's nothing for it to hold on to, and it would probably be lost. Finally, we're talking about balanced and unbalanced. Remember that balanced has all of the genetic material, so these ones are balanced. And these two are unbalanced. So hopefully that helps you understand how to do these different manipulations.